Welcome to Inform. Our guest today is Mark Messmer. Excuse me, Senator Mark Messmer. That's all right. Uh, representative of uh, District 48 here in Indiana. And he's going to fill us in a little bit on legislation that uh, is still in the works before the end of the session and some of the great things that have passed. Mark? Okay. Well, thank you. Good to be here again. Uh, probably the most significant issue that's taken its final shape and really getting close to what the final form will be uh, is there's several road funding bills that we've been working on. A couple of them will infuse uh, immediate cash to, to local governments and, and some to the state uh, INDOT. Uh, Senate Bill 67 uh, is the one that, that we've been working on. And that'll be, it'll be a, a distribution to local, local government, uh, about $430 million total statewide. Uh, Dubois County will get about three and a half million of that, uh, about Two million will go to the to the county uh, to to use for their road funding uh, issues, and then a little over a million to Jasper, about uh, four hundred thousand to to Huntingburg. I think there was about sixty thousand to to uh, to Ferdinand and some to Bird's Eye, uh, but that'll be used to to for immediate needs. They can spend it. You know, they'll get it this this year sometime after July one, and they can use it for road road repairs now, or they can they can you know, set it back to use for, for uh, road projects in the future. But that'll be immediate cash to them. And then we've got Senate Bill 333 that will take uh, excess uh, reserve funds at the, at the end of the fiscal year on June 30th. We're projected to have about $400 million of excess revenue. Um, Medicaid spending uh, with, with the, the HIP 2.0 this past year was about $200 million less than the expenses than we thought they would be. And then um, about 200 million in just other uh, other uh, additional revenue that you know than we projected. So that 400 million dollars will be rolled uh, into the state highway fund, you know, for INDOT to use for repairs and maintenance on on state highways. So between those two, um, and then, and then I think in that state funding mix, they're going to take uh, 50 million dollars out of the the um, the um, major moves trust fund. They've got. Uh, 500 million plus sitting in that account, they're going to transfer some of that money. Uh, between the two, they're you know there's you know getting close to a billion dollars of of money that will be uh, sent to the state and local governments th this year for you know for additional road road repairs and bridge maintenance and mm -hmm. and a pretty good shot in the arm. And then some things that we're doing to help set the stage for you know for future you know some more long term funding sources in uh, House Bill 1001. Uh, in that bill, either counties that have they have adopted wheel tax um, or excise tax on you know at the county level, um, or cities above ten thousand, you know if the counties don't have it, if they have a a, a road improvement plan you know set that kind of shows where that money would go, uh, they'll be able to increase their their excise tax from twenty five to fifty dollars per vehicle, or if they use wheel tax currently it can be up to forty dollars. Uh, per vehicle, and they can raise that to 80. Uh, but that money has to be allocated for, uh, you know, f for repairs and maintenance. It can't be used for, you know, for other uh, county mm -hmm. revenue sources or uh, revenue needs. And uh, that would give local, you know, local units some some long-term uh, funding increases. And then on uh, statewide, into the into the into what they call the. Um, Oh, look at my notes here. I'm going to cheat. Not uh, a in, problem. In the motor vehicle, motor vehicle highway fund, and that money gets split. It, they get they, that money is where the federal dollars come into, and all of the fuel excise tax. They're going to they'll have an increase of a hundred dollars per electric car, or fifty dollars per hybrid that'll go into that fund, and then that money gets split about fifty fifty between the state and local uh, mm -hmm. local government. And the third component of, of we've got the local funding, the state funding, some you know then some long-term agreement that we have. But uh, through the summer, they're going to set up a, a special task force uh, made up of you know budget folks, transportation department folks, experts in in infrastructure. Um, this panel will will meet to discuss you know how are we going to sustain long-term funding. Uh, it will will and we didn't do any. There, there won't be any, any additional fuel tax increase this year. I know that was one of the components in House Bill 1001 was to look at raising the fuel tax by four cents and then raising uh, tobacco taxes to help 
move some money to, to road funding, but they want to have a, a robust analysis of what are our long-term expenses, what are our current long-term income projections from the excise tax that we currently could uh, collect, and then do they need to make, if they need to make an excise tax adjustment, how much is four cents enough? I guess the concern was if we raised it four cents this year and then this task force was kind of in the, in the works for this year and they came back and said, well, it should have been eight. Well, if you go, you know, the worst thing we could have done was, was raised it this year, not knowing really what the long-term mm -hmm. needs for sure were. Right. And then come back next year and say, oh, we didn't, you know, sorry, do over. We need, you know, so whether it's excise tax, sales tax, uh, tolling on, you know, new bridges or tolling on roads, um, or, uh, you know, some type of mileage fees or, or registration fees, you know, all of the, me all the mechanisms that we use, you know, to, to drive revenue. And they really need to be tailored more toward, you know, user fees. Uh, you know, the current excise tax system uh, is based on, on gallons consumed. And as, a, as the federal government continues to raise mileage, you know, rates and, and mileage standards, that consumption per gallon of fuel continues to go down. Uh, so, I mean, it, it'd be, that would be probably not best to hang our hat on a, you know, on a revenue stream that, that is projected, you know, in the future to continue to go down. Right. Uh, you know, to, to maintain long-term sustainability, we need to look at all of the revenue streams and then what's the most appropriate way to make adjustments. I'm sure the excise tax will, you know, maintain, you know, a portion of that, but it's, it's currently not funding all of our needs and down the road we've got to look at some you know some other ways to adjust and then they'll come back for next session be it a budget year if you're going to make a you know a major tax policy change it, it's best to do that in a budget year when you've got all the you know all the revenue sources that you're looking at at one time so what are some of the other issues well some some hot issues that we uh, either either dealt with or chose you know to to make sure we didn't deal with uh, that we uh, came to pretty unanimous agreement on. There was a couple of versions of, of uh, education bills, uh, House Bill 1004 and Senate Bill 10, that both look at trying to, you know, how do we deal with, with the future potential of teacher shortages, and, and especially uh, areas where, you know, science, math, places where it's, you know, special education, where it's, where it's getting tougher to find people that are, you know, willing to go into those subject areas. I think we've got Plenty of people graduating, you know, with education degrees, but not necessarily in the specialized areas. And one of the mechanisms that they they tried to come up with was to allow superintendents to pay uh, pay extra money. And, and it was really it was it was too loosely defined in both of those bills. It would have allowed them to designate, you know, for their you know what they determined as as you know, as somebody in a, in a high needs area, but there was no definition of what high needs was. And it would have allowed really just bypassing the current, you know, uh, teacher pay bargaining that happens between the teachers and the superintendents, and would have allowed them just to sidestep it and 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 functionally pay anybody, you know, anybody they wanted what they wanted, and and that that was getting to be uh, one of those issues where you know intentions were good, but the details were getting too tough to to get accomplished. So we you know we just agreed to pull back and and not address that issue. Uh, there are some other bills that were looking at, you know, that they'll try to maybe look at some scholarship, you know, funds available to target toward high needs areas and, um, but, you know, I think most of that will probably, you know, will get rolled into and done during, you know, during the budget year as well. Um, the I-STEP, uh, halting the, the impact of the I-STEP changes from last year is, is done and in place and, and it looks like we're, we're getting down to the point of, of agreeing to, uh, I-STEP will be administered this year and next spring. We've got contracts that we're locked into on those, but moving forward, it's pretty much an agreement that, you know, there will be a, a task force also assigned this fall to look at, you know, the uh, standardized testing as a whole and, and what's the best way for Indiana to proceed going forward. In December, the federal government pulled back on their, um, it had probably been 10, 12 years, the No Child Left Behind standards, which had really caused a lot of the 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 uh, problems we were getting with test development and, and more more and more testing requirements they've pulled back on that and it gives us as a state a chance to reset our reset the clock on on how we approach standardized mm -hmm. testing uh, I'm certain from discussions I've heard from 
House and Senate leadership that we'll, we'll end up uh, probably working with, you know, the groups, of the testing companies similar to what we used to do, Iowa Basics, uh, that type of program. There's a group called the North, Northwest Education Alliance. They both have standardized tests that give you uh, all the ability you need to make sure your students are learning in, in content areas you know, based on national standards that, that are, you know, more or less in, in common, common core now and, and could get, get the job done, you know, to monitor ki you know, students' progress with a lot less simple, you know, with much simpler, a lot, lot, lot less expensive and, and shorter time periods and, and uh, a very positive step that, that we made this year on that. Finally, mm -hmm. I, I, I was wanting to get that direction uh, probably when, you know, when I first came into office. That, you know, even eight years ago, I-STEP was a a constant yes. source of aggravation. So glad to see we're moving the right way on that. Um, and then another bill we stopped th th uh, this week um, would a mandate uh, Tesla Motors or really any car manufacturer. You know, there's a lot of I mean, use of the internet uh, and, and most people are quite comfortable with buying, you know, used cars, you know, online. Uh, Tesla Motors does not use dealerships. They sell direct to consumers all across the country. They're not really a very, you know, large manufacturer at this point. Um, you know, maybe making tens of thousands of cars total, you know, compared to millions and millions that the mm -hmm. uh, Ford, GM, Chrysler make. And, and, and Ford, GM, and Chrysler, you know, as, you know, from 100 years ago, you know, have, have gradually, you know, as their volumes gr grew, you know, they work through dealerships just because it, it allows them to, to, you know, to deal with, you know, the large numbers of vehicles they, you know, they handle, mm -hmm. but they're not mandated to use dealerships. Well, GM was pushing one of our senators from a GM heavy area to, you know, to mandate Tesla use dealerships or pull out of the state. And uh, it was, to me, didn't look like a very, uh, very smart thing to do, you know, um, really conflicted with a lot of the free enterprise, you know, mindset that most of us have yeah. on issues, you know, on regulatory issues. And so that we were, we agreed within our, you know, within our uh, Republican Senate caucus to, you know, to have our member pull back on that bill and not move it forward. And uh, I did have a couple of bills receive final passage this week that I had worked on. So really happy with that. One was uh, my Senate Bill 325 passed unanimously in the House this week. So it passed unanimously in the Senate, unanimously in the House, and is off to the governor for signature. And that allows the, uh, the folks like TriCap that administer a program called individ Individual Development Accounts that allows low-income families to, currently they can save through that program with, you know, if they take the right literacy, uh, financial literacy programs and budgeting programs, they can save currently for a mortgage, college expenses, or starting up a small business. This will allow those same, those same clients to, to use that money to save for purchase of a vehicle. So toughest thing for many low-income families is reliable transportation to get to work. Mm -hmm. And this will be a great, uh, a great boost for them to be able to utilize that program. So very, very pleased with that. Well, Mark, our time is just about up. Mm -hmm. uh, is there, you know, I mean, we just have a couple of days left yet of the legislation. And yeah, Monday and Tuesday, we will wrap up all final passage of bills uh, in the House or in the Senate. I think Tuesday and when, or Wednesday will be the last day the, the House will wrap up their, their work. And then we'll go into what we call a week of uh, conference committee time. So we'll be pretty busy Monday and Tuesday. And then uh, Wednesday through the following roughly Wednesday or Thursday, if bills got changed, if like if, if my, any of my bills got changed in the House and I, and I want to make, you know, don't like the changes they made, I've got one bill that I'm going to have go to conference committee. Uh, and that conference committee times when you try to iron out the differences or get the, get the things out that, you know, that you don't like that, that, that were changed. And then they go back to each body one more time for a final vote. But that'll happen. There'll be about 50 bills roughly that'll move through that conference committee week. Uh, many of the bills we've passed, you know, out of the Senate this week were House bills that didn't get, you know, didn't get changed. They'll go directly to the governor. Several of our Senate bills, you know, the same in the House. But there'll be the biggest bill left that we'll have to, to get through that, probably that conference committee time will be those transportation bills. But I'm, you know, pretty sure the agreement is, is on track to end up where, you know, where we discussed earlier. But all those other issues will, will be, uh, haggled out in conference committee and, and many times, you know, bills get, you just can't come to an agreement. And, and so you'll get a bill close, but you just can't get that final version 
done in time and the clock runs out and so all of those get brought back next year to try again so well it just happens like we did on the the program today you know the times run times out, run what, out. We, what we discuss we discuss <laughs> the rest of it we'll cover next week <laughs> there we'll get and le you know can be back and finish that's fill right. it out yep. fill us out that's well, th great yep thank you paul appreciate your invitation again today as always it's great to have you here senator mark mesmer of district 48 in the state of indiana thank you very much for being our guest you're welcome